Let's take a look at every Premier League club and the notable players who failed the trial there. Arsenal, Yaya Torre. Where do we start with Arsenal? Yaya Torre is the big one I suppose. Back in the summer of 2003 he was on trial at Highbury, back when he was viewed as nothing more than the shit Torre. For God's sake Yaya was an 18 year old nobody who just spent two years out the back arse of nowhere in Belgium. This was surely just a token gesture to keep his brother happy right? No, this was a man who'd gone to win African Footballer of the Year four times, two La Ligas, a Champions League and three Premier League titles. All the while threatening to knife his employers in their sleep if they forgot his goddamn birthday. This Part may not be strictly true. And to think he was overlooked in favour of David Bentley, a man more concerned with flushing Robbie Savage's jeans down the toilet than actually realising his potential. Other failed trialists were Ruth Hullet, a future Ballon d'Or winner and nemesis to Alan Shearer. Lads, don't pretend like you wouldn't rip each other's heads off if the cameras weren't there. Who was rejected as a 19 year old in 1987? Oh, and Ivan Rakitic also had a trial, stuck in the same team as world renowned greats such as Nicholas Bettner, Gavin Hoyt, and Anthony Stokes. God help him. Bournemouth Ali Dia. Remember Ali Dia, the horrendous excuse for a footballer with the touch of an elephant who saw Somehow tricked Graham Souness into giving him a game for Southampton after his agent pretended his client was George Weah's cousin. He'd be playing for Gateshead the following season and by all accounts he was still terrible. Well they'd already tried the long con at Bournemouth, Harry Redknapp had given him the trial, he was terrible so unlike Souness he decided not to put him on the pitch but instead told him where the door was. Brighton Roy Keane. So Brighton you might currently have a mild mannered Irishman at your club, a fellow who probably hasn't raised his voice since 2002 but good god it could have been the opposite. Back in the early 90s a teenage pimply faced Roy Keane, Christ a hormonal Roy Keane would have been a Nightmare for everyone involved, was all set for a trial at the club until it was cancelled the night before his flight out from Cork, with Keane apparently too small to make it as a pro. No, that's right, lads, you just concentrate on signing up the likes of Steve Sidwell instead. But Ian Wright was another one they let through their fingers after spending six weeks there on trial but wasn't able to win a contract. Burnley, Adnan Haider. What do you mean you've never heard of Adnan Haider? World renowned superstar, this fella, with 26 caps for the mighty Lebanon and currently a world class midfield general for Al Ansar in the Lebanese Premier League. Okay, I've never heard of him either, but Burnley don't give out many trials, alright? He was there for a week in December 2011 as a 22 year old, it did not go well. Cardiff City, Julian Gray. Does anyone remember Julian Gray? I like to think of him as a B-Tech Jermaine Pennant. And if you're a B-Tech Jermaine Pennant, my god your career must be an absolute shambles. Well you're not far wrong, they both started off as promising talents at Arsenal, both made their way to Birmingham. Throughout his career, Pennant has had a bunch of trials, not least the one that got him sent to jail. But by the age of 29, Gray was a washed up winger having been chucked out of Barnsley and found himself stuck on trial at Cardiff. No contract offer there and within two years he was out in the Cypriot League with new Salamaz Fama Gusta FC. At least he's better than Pennant, who had to see out his days on the bench of the conference, alongside Jamie O'Hara and that fellow off YouTube, Chelsea Kylian Mbappe. The amount of players this club let slip through their grasp is ridiculous. Back in 2012, when Chelsea were European champions that were signing Eden Hazard, Mbappe was just 13 years old, 13, that is mad, and spent a week at the Cobham Training Centre. He played against Charlton and helped the Blues win 7-0, not bad. So the officials called him into the office and having worried over his defensive abilities, hesitated and instead decided to just invite him back for another trial, before his mother piped up and said, no, you have to take him now or in five years when you'll have to buy him for 50 million. Jeez, I think she undersold her son a little bit there. 50 million wouldn't even buy his right leg. Crystal Palace, Chris Samba. Yep, quite a drop in quality now, back to reality with big old Chris Samba. There was a time when this man was getting millions chucked at him every six months, not in January 20. 17 when he was washed up 32 year old, given a trial at Sellers Park by his old boss Sam Allardyce. It didn't work out. Other failed trialists were Sifi Shabalala back in 2012, remember he was the fellow who scored the opening goal of the 2010 World Cup and has one of the strangest names in football. Everton, Mbai Niang. Back in 2012 when Mbappe was on trial at Chelsea, Mbai Niang was alone at Everton. I don't think they've shed too many tears over that one. Yes the former camp prodigy would sign for AC Milan months later but he's also been chucked out on loan every six months since, including to Watford where he didn't really do much, Fulham Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw is used to rejection. Not only was he not offered an academy place at Boyhood Club Chelsea, but he was also turned away as a teenager after a three week trial at Fulham. What a mentor he'd have been to Ryan Sessegnon, huh? Huddersfield Town, Jesse Bertrams. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, who the hell is Jesse Bertrams? Nobody really. He's a 23 year old goalkeeper who's just been released by Cam Burr and is no doubt spending his mornings watching the Dutch version of Jeremy Kyle with his hand firmly wedged down his pants. So that's his career effectively over anyway. But the former PSV goalkeeper was on loan at Huddersfield a couple of years ago. They said no. Leicester City, Fabrice Pancrat. So you don't remember Fabrice Pancrat. Let me refresh your memories up. Watch closely. How about this for a piece of skill and finish? Yep, this was his only contribution in English football. Other than that, he was effectively a flat pancake for Newcastle. Back in the championship season when they were forced to sign a bunch of second-rate nobodies. Leon best anyone. Leicester handed him a trial in 2011, back when they were a championship also ran. And evidently, he never smashed one in like that in training for them. Liverpool, Wayne Rooney. You won't find many people on planet Earth that will get a worse reception at Anfield than Wayne Rooney. Maybe Kelvin McKenzie and possibly Gary Neville. But Rooney, two stints at Everton and 13 years at Old Trafford. Yep, he actually tried out for Liverpool back when he was a kid. Although turning up to the trial in an Everton kit did he think he was getting anywhere with that? Yeah, all black, almost had a trial. I don't know if that counts, probably not. 
But yeah, back when he was 16, establishing himself with Slovenian side Olympia Ljubljana, he was invited for a Melwood trial and travelled to Merseyside to watch them lose to Arsenal in late 2009. But then he picked up an injury before the trial could take place and ended up going home to sign for Benfica instead. God, how many problems that man would have solved. Man City, Pep Guardiola. Yes, Pep Guardiola might be the messiah at the Eddie Head right now, but they actually tossed him away like he's a piece of cheap trash back in 2005. With Stuart Pearce, Stuart Pearce, the man who sticks goalkeepers up front, determining that he wasn't good enough for a team with Sunji High in it. To be fair, Pep was a 34 year old playing in the Middle East, so he probably had a point. Within four years, he'd be winning Champions Leagues again. Pep, that is, not Stuart Pearce, Jesus Christ, his career went down the drain. Oh, and City also turned down Marcus Rashford around the same time because he was too small. Considering City have since won the lottery, I doubt they care all that much now, but if they were still stuck with doing their transfer window shopping down the local bargain basement, they'd probably be screaming into their pillows, alright? Man United, Jeffrey Schlupp. Where do we start with Man United? Well, I'm not even going to talk about Usain Bolt because his entire wish to become a footballer in his 30s is just borderline insane. John Obi Mikel, we all know, spent a month on trial at Old Trafford before Chelsea kidnapped him. Douglas Costa almost spent a trial at the club back in 2010 before Gremio pulled the plug on that one, so Sir Alex turned to plan B and signed someone off the streets instead. I'm going to focus on Jeffrey Schlupp. You know, that bang average Crystal Palace fullback. You might think, oh, fair enough, he must have had a trial when he was about seven years old. Big deal, Man United wanted Cam Jerome when he was a kid too. No, no, this was only five years ago when Schlupp was 20 years old. And he was a striker who hadn't scored in nine games for Leicester that season. So Alex, just why? Schlupp probably thought he'd won the lottery. It, it didn't happen and he was forced to stick it out in the championship with Leicester. Here's the kicker though. Since 2013, Schlupp has won more Premier Leagues than Manchester United. Blessing in disguise? Newcastle, Alan Shearer. Alan Shearer is a god in Newcastle and you might think, who messed up at that club that they had to fork out a world record transfer fee to sign some fella who grew up worshipping them? Well, whoever's idea it was to stick him a goal for his trial. Southampton, I don't know. Okay lads, you're gonna have to help me out here because thanks to Sunis and his inability to determine what makes a good player and what makes an absolute joke, I can't find any lads who failed the trial at Southampton. I'm just leaving this one up to you. Please, Southampton fans, tell me because I've spent ages looking for one. Tottenham, Stephen Apaya. Did you know that Sun Han Min was actually on trial at both Blackburn and Portsmouth in the late 2000s? Without a word of English, they were nightmare experiences for him and off he went. Lucky escapes, lad. Stephen Apaya almost signed for Spurs though. The former Ghana captain and Juventus midfield general ended up a white Lane on trial for a month nine years ago. He ended up signing for Bolina instead. Watford, Harry Kane. Oh, Watford. Well, we all know that they had a Jack Rodwell at trial last summer. God knows why. But then Baba was also on trial at Vicarage Road back at the age of 16. But his trial was cut short and then he went on to get rejected by Barnsley, Gillingham, and Swansea before Stoke would later tell him to go home after complaining about his dodgy knee. You might have thought if you were bad, just give up. For God's sake, even Gillingham said no. But no, he finished his career with 43 Premier League goals and having played for Chelsea, Newcastle, and West Ham. Harry Kane was another one. After being released by Arsenal at the age of 8 because he looked like a kid who ate his feelings, he spent 6 weeks on trial with the Hornets. It didn't work out. Yeah, good stuff Watford. Pat on the back. West Ham, Andres D'Alessandro. Remember Andres D'Alessandro? One of a thousand next Messies? Well, Harry Redknapp had him on trial at West Ham back at the turn of the millennium, but a deal could not be reached. Then in 2010, Jeremy Alliadier, football's answer to the question nobody asked, was offered a trial by the increasingly desperate Avon Grant, who looked as though he was getting close to offering the tea lady a game. Wolves, Joe Hart. So I could touch on the trials that went to Latvia's Euro 2004 star Marius Verpuskovskis, or the permanently injured James McFadden, but no. Joe Hart was a man who could have started his career with Wolves, having spent three months on trial with Dave Jones in 2001. Again, it didn't work out. 